what is Linux, and what are its implications for education. Linux began in 1991 when Linus Torvalds wrote his original Linux kernel, a small piece of code that interacts directly with the computer hardware to allow programs written for the GNU General Public License to run on a free operating system. Torvalds released his code to the public, where a community of users and programs added to his code. Since then, Linux has evolved into the stable and customized operating system we now know. Linux is the best known example of open source software. Open source means that the code is free to use, distribute, and change. Unlike Windows or Mac OS, Linux is available in many distributions to suit the needs of the user. The most popular distributions include Debian, Fedora, Slackware, and Ubuntu. Looking at the application to education, we see that currently, my school district, as well as most that I know of, use either Windows PC or Mac platform. Traditionally, this has been Mac, but with the high cost of purchasing Apple computers, there is an increasing movement towards Windows-based PCs. As Pan and Bonk noted, educational institutions are strapped for cash and need to look at reducing costs. Part of this is hardware, but software licenses are also a major component of costs. Michael Huffman, who is the Special Assistant for Technology for the State of Indiana's Department of Education, figures that they pay only $5 per computer each year on their Linux desktops. Huffman stated that it's the only model we've come up with that is affordable, repeatable, and sustainable. Most software developed for the Linux falls under one of several licenses that allow it to be freely used. This means that there is usually no cost to using an application, and there is no risk of breaching licensing agreements. Katrina, Vogue, and Kim note that patent infringement is also avoided. Aside from Linux as an operating system, some of the best known open source applications include OpenOffice, the Mozilla Internet Suite including Firefox and Thunderbird, and GIMP for working with digital images. Furthermore, for nearly every need there is a freer open source software alternative. For instance, there is Blender and Wings 3D for 3D modeling and animation, Audacity for audio mixing, Caden Live for video editing, QCAD for drafting needs, and the list goes on and on. The main argument against using open source software is that it's not industry standard. There is fear that the knowledge and experience gained from using the software will be wasted if it is not used on the leading proprietary tools. However, Jay Fafman notes that when technology leaders train teachers and students to use proprietary software, it obligates those teachers and students to buy or steal that software. Adrian Moore and Dave Moore point out that by disregarding industry standard marketing and focusing teaching outcomes around specific theory and practice, it becomes arbitrary what brand of software is used. Fafman also dismisses the notion of industry standard, saying that students' technical skills should transcend the particular idiosyncrasies of the application. Fafman found that the applications had similar interfaces and that learning to use the open source software was not a problem for students. Another advantage of these open source applications is that they are often available on more than one platform. OpenOffice, for instance, can be installed on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Solaris, and FreeBSD. Audacity, Blender, and Wings 3D that were mentioned earlier can be installed on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Any files created with these programs are interchangeable regardless of the operating system. Furthermore, most open source software creates files that are compatible with the leading proprietary software. Conversely, many proprietary software files are not recognized by competing applications. This means that if a student creates their project using open source software regardless of their operating system, then it will be compatible with their peer and instructor software. Linux promotes equality. If open source software is free, then everyone can afford it. Having access to a computer that can run it may still be problematic, however. Gary Hepburn and Jan Bewley believe that using open source software is an ethical issue. They state that its use will help in promoting digital equity, eliminating commercial messages from school environments, and promoting the development of an educational commons. If cost is a factor in North American schools, then it is likely a barrier in developing countries. Daniel Stuckert states, open source software helps bridge the digital divide, the abyss between technologically rich and poor nations, because it is free and can be modified to fit specific needs. So for those of us in developed countries, open source software is a means to reducing costs and increasing access to computer technology. For those in developing countries, open source software is a way to get initial access to the same computer technology. Linux and the environment. Linux operating systems usually have much lower system requirements than their Mac or Windows counterparts. For instance, the current Ubuntu release requires a 300 MHz processor and 256 MB of RAM. Granted, many of the applications running will have higher system requirements. Nevertheless, Linux runs fine on computers that are regarded as garbage. 
computers that are cast off and regarded as too slow or out of date by the standards of those living in industrialized countries can be used by those in developing countries. Since many schools are not able to afford enough computers to give regular access to all their students, one solution is the Linux Terminal Server Project. With the use of a single computer acting as a server, many older computers that would otherwise be taken out of service can be connected over the network and act as terminals for students. A current dual-core PC could do all the processing for about 20 client computers. With the recent addition of running applications locally on the machines, this number can be increased significantly. Suddenly, end-of-life computers can be put to practical use in classrooms of any size. As Fafman noted, these machines are essentially free since they are being surplused or recycled. So wrapping up, we see that Linux is cost-effective, its software is compatible and cross-platform, it promotes equality, and it's an environmentally sound option. Hopefully government educational departments take notice of the huge untapped potential in Linux.